Hello, my lovely photogs. Welcome back to another video. Welcome back to the series about visual patterns. This is episode number three. Uh, this is a series about breaking down visual language into visual patterns so that we can have a better understanding of photography and the guiding principles and heuristics around that so that we can all be better photographers at the end of the day. Now, if you haven't watched the very first video on this series where I give a somewhat lengthy explanation on what visual language and visual patterns are and why you would use them over something, say, uh, like photography rules, then please go and watch that first video where I explain all of that and that sets up the context really nicely. Otherwise, let's get into today's video topic, which is leading lines. Now, leading lines are one of those things that the majority of beginner photographers learn, especially at the start of their photography journey. Uh, most people are familiar with it, but of course, no kind of series on visual patterns or photography rules would be complete without a proper thorough demonstration about what leading lines are, how they work, how you can find them in the wild and all those kind of things. And so that's what we'll be doing in this video. So with leading lines, what they are are simply elements in your image that direct the viewer's eye to where you as the photographer want them to go. Usually that's to the, the subject or a, you know, a element in the composition that is of a very high visual hierarchy, but it's not always the subject. And, you know, we can uh, go into a little bit more detail with the explanations and the examples that I'm about to show later on in the video. Now, the big takeaway that I want you guys to have from this video and about leading lines specifically is that leading lines is about visual hierarchy. Of course, you've probably heard me bang on about that a lot of times already, but it's about visual anchoring specifically, as in a place where the viewer's eyes can rest and from there, it's about direction. So having somewhere the viewer's eye can stop and identify what's going on and then moving them usually towards the subject. Now, this gives a very clear direction, a directive to the viewer about what is the most important thing to view in the image. And you as the photographer are giving the viewer kind of guidelines and little tips and little tricks in order to better understand the story that you're trying to tell in the composition. And so leading lines are really about movement. It's about creating a dynamic composition. It's about flow and it's about change. And so that's what I want you guys to keep in mind as I go through some of the examples that I'm about to show you. So as we're about to dive into the examples here, I'd rather give you guys a lot of examples about where to find leading lines specifically and you know give you more of a visual aid in that way rather than explaining in a, a matter that's a, a little bit too overboard for what leading lines are because ultimately leading lines are very easy to understand. Um, and this will make perfect sense as we go through all of these examples. So I'm gonna rapid fire through a whole bunch of these and hopefully that gives you more of a, a better idea on what leading lines are and how to find them. So in this first example, this is a, a landscape, super simple. There's just one leading line and it just so happens to be the highway leading into this sea of fog, this Ankai in uh, Japan and uh, the sunrise that gives all the colors at the top. Very, very straightforward example. I wanted to start with, with something easy, uh, but the next examples are all about roads specifically because roads are very easy leading lines to use in your compositions that once you see, you'll kind of just never run see them. So in this image that I took in the Faroe Islands, one of the things that really caught my eye is that, you know, there was a whole bunch of storms and real dark clouds and there was this bright light shining through all of it, but the bright light actually illuminated all of the wet roads that were leading up to it, which I thought was kind of cool. Uh, and so really the leading lines here is the whole road in and of itself. And then that kind of leads to this gigantic, uh, cloud formation, this really bright cloud formation that is the main subject of this particular image. And so again, this is one of those examples where the actual road in and of itself leads the viewer's eye into something. We have the same idea in this image as well. We have two roads leading into this 
main subject, this main little uh, town here that I thought was the subject of this image when I shot it. But in addition to those two roads, we also have this very natural uh, nature made kind of river that flows around it, which I thought was really, really neat. And these kind of leading lines, they're formed by nature. And I'll have a lot more examples of those in the upcoming images, but you don't necessarily have to have just one kind of line in your images. You can have multiple lines in your images. Don't be afraid to incorporate as many as you feel is appropriate. And they don't always need to be leading to your subject specifically. In this case, you know, they're encapsulating the subject here, which also works as well, which in essence, the, the I guess the title of leading lines is kind of misleading because it doesn't necessarily need to direct you in a particular place. The eyes just need to move in a way that is progressive towards the understanding of the image in and of itself. So keep that in mind as well. Okay, these next couple of examples are specifically architecture based, so more city, more urban things you can find within a city that you might be able to take some inspiration from so that, you know, when you're walking around the city, maybe doing street photography or maybe doing architecture photography as well, uh, you might be able to spot these in your own walkabouts and in your own adventures. So this particular image is of DDP in South Korea. Uh, the reason why I shot it this way is to use what's called a like perspective line. The angle in which I shot this image gives this kind of warped effect for what's happening here. So you have all these lines that are kind of converging on this main subject down here in the bottom right hand corner. And this is very, this is a very simple thing to do. All you need to, to kind of do is just tilt your camera just a little bit to the side and suddenly the things in the corners of the composition start to get warped out, uh, like in this example here in the top left. And then in this example, you have all of these diagonal lines leading into the subject. So this is something uh, that you can use a lot. In this example, they also happen to be converging perspective lines as well. In this image, it's a very easy architecturally based one because it is one of the, the classic uh, Sydney Opera House images where we have these seats that you know wrap around and lead into the Sydney Opera House right here. And it's just very obvious where these leading lines are trying to direct your eye to as a viewer. Uh, this is a very famous composition and with very good reason, because it's very obvious what is the purpose of this image, where you should be looking, what's going on in this image. So even though it's simple, doesn't necessarily mean that it's less effective than any other visual pattern. So, you know, as I mentioned at the start of the video, leading lines is, you know, very, I wouldn't say basic, but it is a beginner thing that most beginners learn, but it is, extremely effective. That's why so many people learn it so quickly on in their journey, because it is such a powerful, effective visual pattern that is easy to use and uh, requires a little bit of practice, but you know, it, it is easy to spot once you get the hang of it. All right, flying through this example, we have the Sydney Harbour Bridge. And you know, if you're under any kind of bridge here, you automatically have a very easy, uh, perspective leading line going on that you can potentially take. In this instance, we have, you know, the bridge leading into the main ferry down here, the main subject of this particular image. Super simple, super easy. In this example of the Osaka castle during cherry blossom season, one thing that I included that you can find in nature is just using trees as a leading line source. In this instance, I use one of the Sakura branches to aid the viewer's eye into Osaka Castle. Amongst other things, of course, you know, there's things like depth and color contrast and contrast in general and all these other visual patterns that are going on in this image as well. But the main visual pattern in this one is something you can just find in nature.
In these next examples, I'm going to show you guys the vanishing point style of leading lines. So in, in this instance, and I showed uh, an image that was quite similar to this in the, the last episode, um, but in this particular one, what we're focusing on is whenever you're on a really straight street, the nature of how long it is will cause a vanishing point is what it's called. And these vanishing points are points where lines will converge and intersect. In this instance, what's going on here is you have this bright skyline and the vanishing point of how far the actual road is going. And that creates quite, quite like a, a triangle type composition that um, leads towards the two figures down in the middle and leads your eye directly to that. Very easy to do, especially if you find yourself in a city that is built on a grid. Unfortunately, Sydney isn't like that, but you know, any long road will do. In this instance, it's a back street in Osaka, but it's very easy to find when you get you know a long uh, long vantage point and it kind of goes into a vanishing point. In this example, we have a shot from Fujiyoshira and this is a road that is like, I don't know, two kilometers long or something like that, three kilometers long or something like that. It's really long uh, with Mount Fuji in the background. But what is giving the vanishing point perspective leading lines here is the power lines up the top, majoritively. Uh, of course, down the bottom, we also have the road as well. That's kind of leading down into this point, but you can make, you know, <laughs> really, really nice vanishing points out of just straight streets. And it's that easy. In this instance, the leading lines aren't necessarily leading to the subject. Like if you are deeming the subject in this instance to be, you know, the big Mount Fuji in the background, but it is providing a, Another element to aid the composition to make it more visually interesting. And so, yeah, again, it's it's super simple to do. In this example, I have one of my friends walking on a railway track, and this is a short leading line. It doesn't necessarily need to be a long one, but again, anything that has parallel lines that vanish into a point are uh, easy things that you can target to use leading lines for. All right, and coming back into the city now, we have a panning shot that I took uh, in Tokyo of this guy on a bicycle riding on a road. Uh, but the leading lines in this instance are something that encapsulates the subject more than it does lead towards the subject. And this is an, just another way that you can use leading lines as well. So in this instance, it's kind of suggesting the overall passage of where you should be looking in this particular image. And that just so happens to be the, the biker in the middle. Now, these next couple of examples, I wanted to show you guys how you can use leading lines with shadows to your advantage because shadows happen all the time. And depending on how you position yourself and position your body and therefore your composition, you can manipulate shadows really easily uh, and they occur everywhere. So you can spot these leading lines everywhere you are. In this instance, again, it's very, very obvious what's going on here. There is just this straight leading line by the use of shadow into the main subject here, which is the lady on the bicycle. In this image here, we have the main subject who just walked out of the shadow. I think it was a overhanging train line or something like that, uh, in which you have this kind of diagonal line leading towards the, the main subject. In this particular image, this is a sand dune image and I'm using other sand dunes the shadow that was cast from other sand dunes as a kind of soft leading line to tell you the viewer where is important to look in this particular image. This is another image that incorporates a whole bunch of different visual patterns as well, such as contrast and shadow and you know lightness, darkness and, and all those other kind of things. 
But the lines here is uh, what I was trying to really accomplish with this particular composition. All right, the last few examples. Now we'll just fly through these because uh, <laughs> this has been a, a lot of examples so far. But these examples that are coming up are all nature made. And again, all very obvious. But in this instance, we have the river. Uh, here I shot this on a drone, uh, Kochi, and in this instance, the actual river in and of itself is the subject. It is the light bouncing off the water that I was really attracted to when I first took this image. And that was what I was trying to accentuate because the rest of the composition is literally just city. And uh, I think that looks pretty neat. In this example, there are so many different lines going on, but there's a general kind of flow happening. So these are glaciers shot at Mount Cook in uh, New Zealand. But the main kind of, well, this is how I composed this particular image anyway, is that these mountains, specifically that mountain tip is the very center of this particular composition. And all of these glaciers kind of run up this way and they kind of lead towards this, this, uh, this mountain top right here. That was the intention. There's no one singular line in this instance that is directing you through there, but instead there's multiple lines that are kind of moving in the same direction, which is the, the point that I was trying to get across. All right, and for the last example here in the Faroe Islands, I just thought it was a good idea to yeet my drone up into a snowstorm. <laughs> Uh, yeah, not a great idea, I know. Uh, but in this instance, we have the river that was uh, situated in the middle of the composition here, uh, being the main subject in and of itself, and kind of moving throughout the composition from the bottom into the middle, and then flowing up into the right, creating a flow, creating movement in this image that Otherwise, wouldn't be there if I just shot the, the mountain in and of itself. So, yeah, very easy to find and nature made. But the point here is that lines and leading lines are everywhere, whether it's in nature or it's an urban setting, whether you're using roads or a fence or using parallel lines or you're using perspectives or you're using shadows, whatever the case may be, there are lines everywhere. Leading lines are one of those things that it does require a little bit of practice to get into your repertoire when it comes to your vision. But, you know, it's one of the first things that most people learn when they're starting their photography journey. And over time, you get really, really good at seeing them. So get out there and practice more and, you know, you'll uh, end up adding them to your repertoire even more and more. All right, I hope those examples and those explanations gave you a little bit more of an understanding about leading lines, about how to use them, about why you would want to use them and about how to spot them. I'll see you in the next video on visual patterns, but until then, get out there and make something that matters. Peace.